bless your heart. Some kind of way you done found yourself for the online tutoring of Mr. Whittington's. Is it Mr. or Mr.? Mr. Whit? How that man say that? <laughs> anyway, today's episode is on factory. Now, I don't know what in the Sam here any of this means, but I hope you enjoy yourself. So get your ink pen and your pencil and get ready to learn about factory. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Wick with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about sum of cubes. Sum of cubes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and first and foremost, when you're dealing with sum of cubes, the first thing you want to do is memorize the sum of cubes. I would suggest from one cubed all the way up to ten cubed. All right, so at least know the first ten perfect cubes. They will come in handy, trust me. All right, so here before you, you have the formula, the format for a sum of cubes. For instance, when presented with the form a cubed plus b cubed, the factorization pattern will be the cube root of that first term, a, plus the cube root of that second term, b, times a squared minus ab plus b squared. All right, so for instance, in an example like this, where we have x cubed plus 8, what you'll do is the following. You'll recognize that it's x that's being cubed, so I can show that my term x is being cubed here, plus 2 is being cubed here to get 8. So 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8, so this would be 2 to the third power. So what I'm showing you is that my a value is x in this problem and that my b value would be 2. Then going forward from there, I'll go ahead and plug it into the formula. So we'll say that we have x plus 2 times that first term squared, so x is being squared, so you'll end up with x squared minus the product of x and 2, which gives you 2x, then plus 2 squared, which is 4. And there you go. That's what we'll be doing in this lesson today, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom line, that's the answer. And what's important about your answer here is the trinomial that you get. It looks as though it's a perfect square trinomial, but it's not, okay? Bottom line, the trinomial that you'll find yourself getting when you factor a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes, for that matter, will always be prime. You cannot factor that trinomial. So you don't even need to try it, all right, unless you're about to use some, you know, complex numbers, all right? So, so if you're going to be bound by real numbers, you will not have to factor that unless the teacher asks you to find out its complex solution. So it depends on what level of mathematics you're in, bottom line. But there you go, all right? and also that it can't be factored. That's important to know too. So let's actually look at some real examples here. All right, let's check it out. Problem number one is coming your way. All right, in problem number one, we have y cubed plus 27. And notice that at the bottom of your screen there, I have the actual format and factoring pattern there for reference, okay? So the first thing I wanna show is that the first term that's being cubed is y. So this is y cubed. The second term that's being cubed is the number three. So three is being cubed. So applying the formula here, we'll end up with our first binomial being y plus three. And then from there, you're gonna square that first term. So that's gonna be y squared minus the product of y and three, which is three y plus three squared, which is nine. Remember, your trinomial here will always be prime. In other words, you can't factor it. All right, done and done. So that's problem number one. So let's check out the next one, problem number two. In problem number two, you have 64x cubed plus 125y cubed. So what's being cubed here? Let's find out. What we have is we have 4x raised to the third power plus 5y raised to the third power. In other words, you want to be able to identify that a value as well as your b value. And here, my a value would be 4x, whereas my b value is the 5y. Then, continuing our factorization of the sum of cubes, we'll end up with the a plus the b, 5y, times my first term squared, which is going to be 16x squared. That's 4x times 4x to give me 16x squared, minus the product of these two terms, which is going to be 20xy. All right, And then 5y squared will give me a positive 25y squared. All right, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the answer. Done and done. Just like that. That's problem number two. Yep. All right, let's continue. Next problem, problem number three, coming your way. Once again, 
Problem number three, we have a sum of cubes. This is 1,000 B cubed plus one, all right? So once again, I got my factoring pattern down here to remind me what to do. And like the previous problems, let's go ahead and identify what's actually being cubed here. So 1,000 B cubed, that's actually 10 B raised to the third power. And one is a perfect everything, so I can just show that this one is being cubed. Therefore, my A value for my factoring pattern here is actually 10B, whereas my B value would be 1. All right, so now that we've identified our A and our B value, our answer here is going to be 10B plus 1 times the first term squared, which is going to be 100B squared, minus the product of 10B and 1, which is 10B plus 1 squared, which is 1. And that's the answer. That's it. Mm-hmm in the box around it just like that all right that's problem number three all right let's check out the next one in problem number four I have 343 Z cubed plus 729 Y cubed so first of all let's go ahead and show what's being cubed here in the sum of cubes we can rewrite the 343 Z cubed as 7 Z to the third power plus 729 y cubed is going to be 9 y cubed all right just like so so here according to my factoring pattern my a value would be 7 z whereas my b value would be 9 y then plugging them into the formula i end up with 7 z plus 9 y times 7 z squared which is going to be 49 z squared minus the product of these two are going to be 63yz plus 9y squared which is 81y squared and that's it remember the trinomial is always going to be prime so you don't ever have to try to continue to factor that in other words we're done that's it We've got a red box coming for you here it is here it is here it is there you go I don't like that red box I'm gonna fix it yep the red box is important there you go. That's not much better, but we're going to let me make it on that. Okay? All right, let's continue. Problem number five. So, with problem number five, I have 8m to the sixth power plus 125n to the ninth power. Notice how our exponents are not cubed. They're not. They're here. I have the first term is to the sixth power, and I have my second term to the ninth power. What I want to show in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, that as long as your exponents are multiples of three, you can show that they are perfect cubes. For instance, if I'm going to rewrite this showing what my A and my B value is for the problem, I can go ahead and show that it's actually 2m squared that's being cubed because notice that 2 to the third power is 8 and m to the second power you would multiply the exponents 2 times 3 will give you that original m to the sixth power therefore we just verified that it's actually 2m squared that's being cubed alright continuing that thought process we'll end up with this 125 into the ninth power rewritten as 5n cubed and that's being cubed just like that so this would be my A value and my B value for this factoring pattern here. Let's go ahead and plug it in then. We'll have 2m squared plus 5n cubed times the first term squared, which is going to give me 4m to the fourth power, minus the product of these two, which is going to give me 10m squared n cubed plus the 5n cubed squared, which gives me 25n to the sixth power. And that's going to be my answer for that problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number five. All right. Good stuff. Let's see if I can get a better box this time. Oh, that's great. That's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Next problem, we have problem number six. And once again, just in case you thought I was cheating, uh, there it is. There's a formula. So looking at this problem number six, we end up with a quantity of 2a minus 1 cubed plus 8. So this is a perfect cube, ladies and gentlemen. It can look just like this from time to time. So let's see how to break that down. What's being cubed, all right, is the 2a minus 1 that's being cubed and plus 2 is being cubed. So I just want to make sure that we're clear that the 2a minus 1, that quantity is being cubed, plus the number 2 that's being cubed. So in plugging these into our factoring pattern, okay, I'll be using brackets to bring clarity to this process. So here with brackets, I'm showing that the first two terms when added together will be the quantity of 2a minus 1 plus 2, 
then times the first term squared, which is going to be 2a minus 1 squared, minus the product of these two terms, which is 2 times 2a minus 1, plus the last term squared. So 2 squared is just 4. All right, And that's what I have thus far. All right, so next I'll be combining my like terms in this first set of brackets here. So I'll have 2a and a negative 1 and positive 2 combined to give me a positive 1. So next what I'll do is I'll show that I'll be expanding this all right, into 2a minus 1 times 2a minus 1. And this is still the negative 2 times 2a minus 1 plus 4. All right, so I just wanted to make sure that you see that I'll be expanding this and then I'll be foiling this out, aka using distributive property. Once again, if you need help on multiplying binomials, check out our multiplying binomials video. I'll put a link right down there. Okay. So next, I bring down my 2a plus 1, and this is going to be times. I'll now have 4a squared minus 2a minus 2a plus 1 minus 4a plus 2 plus 4. Okay, all right. So bringing down this step, I'll have 2a plus 1, and then combining my like terms within the parentheses, I'll end up with 4a squared, and this is going to give me a negative 8a, and then I'll have 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is going to give me a positive 7. All right, just like so. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll look at your trinomial here, and if you can factor that out, then that's exactly what you'll do. But we would be needing two numbers that multiply to give us 28 and add to give us 8, and that's not possible. So this is going to be my answer right here, ladies and gentlemen. All right? And I'll recap over this problem too. So we started out with problem number six. We identified that the first term being cubed was 2a minus 1, that the second term was 2. And then from there, we went ahead and plugged into our formula. Our a cubed plus b cubed equals to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Mm -hmm, that there. So what we next have is me adding the 2a minus 1 plus the 2. We're going to square that first term, that 2a minus 1, so we squared it, minus the product of these two, plus the last term squared, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. From there, we expanded that 2a minus 1 squared and combined our like terms in this first set of brackets here. And after foiling it out, we ended up with the 4a squared minus 2a minus 2a plus 1. And then I distributed that negative 2. Let's go ahead and show that I have those arrows pop in there. And then we ended up with negative 4a plus 2 plus 4. Combining everything, all right, we end up with the answer 2a plus 1 times 4a squared minus 8a plus 7. And this trinomial here is not factorable. So that's our answer. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, we were happy to bring you some of Cubes. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. Peace. F-A-C-T-O-R-I-N-G. This includes topics such as GCF, that's the greatest common factor, like Obama. The difference of squares. Quadratic trichinomiasis. Oh, Lord, that's when the pig is sick on all four sides. The sum of cubes, that sounds like one of them games they play. Difference of cubes, oh, that's just ignorant. AC method, yes, honey, because you've got to have your air conditioning in Texas. And factoring by grouping. <laughs>